Hello friend, this is Anna Sabramowitz from eLearner Engaged and I wanted to shoot another video for you. And mostly, let's just say they're for me. So uh, it's kind of nice because I got a couple of really nice feedback emails uh, from the first video that I shot. And uh, one of them was from Norman Lamont, who is on the other side of the world. And he's, I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but he also works with Kathy Moore and is a, another one of experts uh, in this world on scenario design. And I believe they've done conferences together, him and Kathy. So if you haven't checked out his work, do check it out. He actually does a lot of uh, work out loud kind of posts. And anyways, it's, it's really cool to, to be able to connect with people that share your experiences and and can you know also have the expertise to give you feedback on what you're doing and he's definitely offered that so that's really cool so um the one thing that i i read yesterday and i thought it was really interesting and i never thought about it before this way uh was i'm, I'm a part of an online course community for teachable teachable is where i host my courses and so this uh, guy wrote a blog post about how you should just give up on making online courses because most people don't complete them. And the reason he said most people don't complete them, and there's, I mean, there's a proliferation of their of MOOCs and all kinds of, all kinds of resources, free eBooks, free repositories, right? All kinds of digital content. And he said the reason people don't really co complete these courses is because, um, they're digital hoarders. They'll just buy information and just store it. And that really resonated with me because I had an Evernote account for the longest time. And I don't know if you've heard of Evernote, uh, but it's a really cool tool. But like all tools has to be used judiciously, appropriately. You got to have a strategy, right? And so what I used Evernote for is to just every time I saw something interesting that I wanted to read later or I thought I would share with other people, I would just store it. And it's, it's got a really awesome plugin that you can use right on your browser, of course. So it's just easy to do that. And after a year or two, I had like 800 stored articles that I had probably just quickly browsed. Once in a while, I'd go in there into this giant dump of stuff and be like, wow, I really should check this out, but I don't have time right now. And so it's funny because recently when I started doing the uh, Learning Experience Friday newsletter, I I don't have the conscience to recommend things that I haven't personally tried. Like I won't tell you to play a game unless I've actually played it and either sucked or whatever, right? It's I, that's just that's just how I work. So when you're recommending five things every week, it's um, you got to do your homework. You got to actually commit and read stuff and watch it and play with it. So that's good for you to hear, I think, because then you know that everything that's in there, I've actually tested myself. It's not just like some randomly heard about thing, but also it's really good for me because all of a sudden I'm vetting through things. I'm looking through them. And I'm saying this, this is not worth it for me to read. Why would I t tell other people to do this? So, and I, I see this all the time where people put together giant, like lists of a hundred things to see or lists of a hundred tools to check out. And I'm like, how many of these tools are you actually using? How many of them have you vetted? Or did you just go top 10 and then just compile the list for me? Do you know what I mean? So uh, not that there's anything wrong with that because those are useful in a way, but you know, and mine isn't really, my list is curated, but the thing is I do go through every one of those things and experience them, which is a really big bonus for me. So if I hold myself to that standard, it's actually me getting better every week with five new things, five new technologies, five new strategies. So I find that actually really cool. Now, the other thing I thought about, because I am developing a scenario design course for e-learning, and um, one of the things I thought about was MVP, which is called Minimum Viable Product right, which is the idea that uh, you can't, you'll never launch, whatever you launch the first time is going to not be perfect. You got to get over that perfectionism thing, or it's actually a, a fallacy to think that you can produce something great without iteration on first try. It's ridiculous. Good luck with that, unless you're Michelangelo, but I'm sure he had, he, I'm sure he had ugly prototypes, right? So, 
I'm thinking that um, that movie that uh, I don't know if you if you're familiar with South Park, and even if you hated or not, whatever, South Park the cartoon is uh, has a really solid documentary, uh, and it was it was about the idea, uh, and it's called Six Six Days to Air, and you should check it out. Uh, the idea is that uh, they shorten the time to launch by to six days or something like that, which is crazy as far as the the amount of time it takes to release an episode. But they realized that if they added, uh, they, the development followed the old rule that development will take as much time as you give it. So if you give yourself three months, guess how long the development of something will take? Three months. But if you give yourself, let's say, six days, Let's see what you can accomplish in six days. Let's see what you can roll out in six days. And what they also found is that over a certain amount of time, uh, let's say they gave themselves three weeks, the last week uh, of that extra, you know, they would spend maybe an extra 20 or 30 hours of tweaking, but that would improve the actual overall product only a couple of percent. So it's it's called the law of diminishing returns, right? Even though you're spending just as much time, you're really not improving the end product as much as the initial week was of just ramp up and development. So that's that's a great perspective to have and to practice as you're creating things and launching them out there is just to get your idea out there and then get feedback and then iterate on, the, on it again and you know create your first prototype, minimum viable product, the smallest, uh, the smallest chunk that can be tested and that's uh, as true as you can be to uh, to the end, you know, to what you want the user to do, uh, whether that's a scenario or, uh, or a video or whatever, but just get it out there with the gist of what you want and then you can add design and captions and all that other stuff later. Kind of like I'm doing right now, kind of. <sighs> I'm out of voice again. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.